had worked for a, uh, a store in Monticello, uh, Murray Snyder's Music Center, and Murray passed away rather unexpectedly. And I opened up, I, I ran that shop for a while while the family was trying to figure out uh, what their next move was, and it was with the intention that I would you know, buy their, that shop from them. We couldn't work out a deal, and that's when I decided that I needed to open up my own shop, so ended up opening up about five or six doors down from that old shop. The first time I met Steve, I walked into Steve's Music Center when it was on um, Main Street, when it was on Broadway in Monticello still. And um, I was probably about seven or eight years old, and I saw Steve play for the first time. He picked up a Les Paul, and he started shredding it. And I mean, that was a big day for me, not only because you know, I met Steve and I was inspired by his playing, but also because he gave me the guitar teacher, my, my guitar teacher's phone number. One of my fondest memories of going to Steve's shop is when I first went there and he helped me find the top string to my ukulele. It really brought everything together for me and started me off on learning how to play the uke. I'm from Rock Hill and I love the area and uh, the two buildings that are, I have, this one and the one next door, uh, were available. Um, at the time I was renting a Monticello and I didn't realize that my lease was up. Uh, we managed to get the money together to, to buy these buildings and um, then it was probably the best move I ever made. Steve's has always been right there. It's like the community hub for music. You know, anything that goes on musically passes through Steve's. Um, I think it definitely brings a bit of culture to Rock Hill. I just want to say that like having his store there, it really bring something to the community on the aspect of there's nothing else around for miles that offers anything close to what he offers. I can't say uh, that I've that things are growing because they're definitely not. You know, things are definitely shrinking in terms of a customer base. There really isn't that much to go around and people don't really have as much free time as they used to or as much expendable income as they once might have had. Around the turn of the century, um, my brother uh, came to work with me. He worked down in the city in finance and, uh, and he had acquired a lot of web skills and he basically you know took we had a mutual friend that um, kind of started us on the website but he really you know he learned HTML on a weekend and um, and that became his his baby and it was he did amazing work with the uh, with the website up until 2010 actually 2009 he had gotten ill and passed away in 2010. He influenced the area big time with his music. Not just with his music, but with the music he makes and with the community that he brings with his music. I mean, like, when you go to any open mic that he's at, it's like a collective of, of all kinds of musicians from the area. Whenever his band is playing, people come because they know that they're going to be great. So he's definitely, he, I mean, he's associated with, every, with all the great musicians in the area. He, everybody knows Steve, everybody loves Steve. I mean, I don't think anybody who plays music anywhere around here has anything bad to say about him. He offers you an environment where you can learn how to play a variety of instruments. He gives you a whole library of instruments to go through. So if you're not really sure what you want to play, he probably has it. My biggest purchase was probably the mixing console. We're just sitting right there. That was a big, big purchase and he beat Sweetwater's price. You know, a small shop in Rock Hill beats multi-million dollar online business. Not only can most small shops not do that, but it was like instant. You know, I went in there, I ordered it, and two days later it was there. I mean, that's like beyond convenience. But also, if, if you're looking for something and he doesn't have it, he's willing to go the extra step to help you find it. And you can't get that at, at anywhere else. You can't get that kind of personal connection, you know, where you're getting, not only are you getting a great piece of gear, but you're getting it, you know it's going to be a great piece of gear, because the person who's giving it to you is your friend. They're there for you, they want to see you make good music. And he's been that person to a lot of people in this area. You know, he, he's been that person to a whole lot of people. It's very simple. What sets him apart from others is he looks at you as another person, as a friend, not a dollar sign. And that's what most music stores actually do nowadays. You want to try and treat people well. You want to, you know, try and hook them up with the right things rather than the most expensive things. Um, you know, it's as my old boss used to say, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. But I mean, like I said, you know, if I had one thing to say to Steve, it'd be thank you. Thank you for the years of musical support, um, for supporting me in, in everything I do, and, and for being musically inspiring. And somehow the music thing just has a real communal spirit about it, and it, it encompasses everybody. It's not just like one 
demographic, you know, it's, it's, everybody is affected by music in some way. I'd like to see it happen throughout the entire county so that if somebody comes to this area, they don't, they can, you know, they'll stop in Rock Hill at Dutchess or they'll stop in Bethel at the Dancing Cat or at the, you know, Bethel Woods or they'll, you know, stop in Monticello and maybe Rourke's has got some music going on or if I'm able to help, you know, usher in that era, that'd be great. Um, I'd love to have something like that on my tombstone, like, you know, he, he helped. <laughs> I've been doing this now for close to 20 years, um, so I certainly want to make the 20-year mark that, as a personal goal, you know, just being in my own business. Uh, so that'll be two, 2016. After that, we'll have to see if 25 is on the, uh, <laughs> the horizon or not. <laughs>